Ryan, legend, thank you very much. Um, okay, so first of all, thanks very much for joining me. We've got a quite good numbers in here at the minute. If you can, while you're doing this, I'm multitasking. How about you giving it a go at multitasking as well and just send out a message on your social media just to let know, uh, people know that you're going to be um, just with me for a short while, really. Just let them know that we're going through some eye techniques. Now, tonight, I've got my list as per usual. Typical, uh, typical Virgo, nice and uh, organised here. Uh, we've, like I said, we're gonna, I was saying in the chat room earlier on, we're going to be going through a number of techniques that uh, I use when I'm working on eyes. And the reason that this particular broadcast has come about is that if you've been looking at my social media recently, you'll notice I've post, posted some new portraits. Uh, and while I've been working on those portraits, I've had to kind of use different techniques on the eyes. Uh, and it kind of again reinforced to me that really when it comes to working in Photoshop and Lightroom to some extent, there's never one technique that will work brilliantly on every single picture. There's always going to be something you might have to do a little bit differently. So I'm, I'm a huge advocate of saying that when you're doing retouching or when you're learning Photoshop techniques, try to learn as many techniques as you can that are, spo that are kind of going to give you the same result. Because then when you use what is probably your favorite technique, and it doesn't work so well, or doesn't seem to go so well on a particular picture, you can then go into your virtual toolbox, drag out another technique, then work on the picture, and then you're gonna get the result you want. So don't stick with one technique, try to learn as many techniques as you can. So that's what this is all about. Uh, we're gonna go through some stuff, so why don't I dive straight in and let's bring up my, uh, my Photoshop screen right now. Okay, right, let's just get cracking. So, uh, <laughs> first one, this picture here, this was uh, a one-to-one -one teaching that I did with a girl called Lorraine, absolutely superb girl. If you've seen a video I did, a bit of a rant about the industry and how people get treated and put down a lot, that was actually after I did this one-to-one -one, uh, session here. But on this particular picture here, this is the finished picture, uh, but what I wanna do is I wanna show you uh, kind of the start picture here where literally out of camera, and one of the first things I would do with this particular picture here, uh, there's a few things I do, like work on the hair and all that kind of stuff, but this is about eyes. So what I'm going to do first of all is just show you a technique uh, that you will have seen many times, okay? If you've followed lots of stuff that I do, uh, you'll have seen this particular technique. So I'm going to quickly go through that because it does link in then why I'm showing you these other techniques, okay? So hopefully... Uh, bum, 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 bum. Hopefully everything's going okay. Right, so this is a technique that you will have seen me do before. So what I wanna do, I just wanna brighten uh, this, this girl's eyes and add a bit of sharpening to them. So if you've seen the videos before, what you'll know I do is I use quick selection to make a selection first of all, or sorry, quick mask to make a selection of the eyes. So we do that, I'm gonna get a brush and I'm gonna press Q. And then you'll see over in the layers panel, the actual layer, the background layer gets highlighted in this uh, red kind of color, telling me that I'm now using Quick Mask. And then all I'm gonna do, if I just zoom in just a touch more, with the brush, all I can do there, nice and easy, is just brush over the eye. And where we see the red overlay is where I'm eventually going to be selecting. So I'll do that eye, and we'll do this eye. Now I'm not gonna labor this technique because you will have seen me do this before, but I need to do it to link in with everything else. All right, so just treat it as a bit of a reminder. So let's just uh, paint away so we've got the cornea showing just there. So that red overlay, when I come out of Quick Mask by pressing Q or going to the icon on the toolbar at the bottom, we now see the marching ant selection. So then what I'll do is with this particular technique, I will come to my adjustments over on the right hand side of the screen and I will choose something like selective color, which brings up the properties. Now, by default, when you do this the first time, you'll probably notice that the colors in the properties is shown as reds. For this technique, take it away from reds and just put it into neutral. So that's one of the first things that you need to do there. But how can we brighten the eyes? Well, we're gonna use a simple thing like a blend mode. And I always talk about there being three things in Photoshop that if you kind of understand them, you don't need to know all the in-depth details of all the mathematics and algorithms, just have an understanding of them, layer masks, brushes, and blend modes. There's the sky's the limit, really is the sky's the limit. So I've got a selection of these eyes, that's already been done, so I'm gonna brighten the eyes by using a blend mode, and the one I'm gonna use, here we've got this one called Linear Dodge. So you can see there, really powerful, obviously way too much, but the eyes have been brightened. 
Great thing about this is it's on its own layer, so you can then control the opacity to how, how actually uh, bright you want those eyes. And I would advise really when you're doing this that you don't have the face in really, really close. Bring it back just a little bit so you can kind of view it from the normal kind of viewing distance, if you like, or the size the picture will be. And then you'll get a good idea as to how bright those eyes should be. So even now, that looks too bright for me. So I'd probably take it down to around about maybe, I don't know, 40% uh, something like that. You can then go on and do the sharpening. And as again, as just a reminder, the one way I love to sharpen eyes is by adding a blank layer and then actually using the sharpen tool over in the toolbar on the left hand side here. Using the sharpen tool, I leave the options at the top of the screen pretty much at their default where it says strength of 30. Uh, and then we'll just use this little icon here, which means that uh, it will look through the layer stack to find pixels that it can sharpen. Johan, you've put the, her, her eyes are kind of one's brighter than the other. Yep, absolutely know that. When it came to the final picture, that was kind of evened out. So I'm just literally going to dive through and show you these particular techniques. And then you, obviously you could tweak them when you're doing it. Uh, but now that we've got that, we've got the sharpen tool. We're going to be using this one here where we can actually look for pixels down through the layer stack because we can't sharpen a layer that's got nothing in it. And then all I'll do is just come in. I'll only work on the one eye. And I'll press down and I'll circle around two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll do more than I normally would do just so that you can see on your screen. But you can see now if I hold down the option key, uh, hold that down and click on the eye icon on the background layer, or just below the eye icon, so we can go from before, after, before, and after. You can see there very, very quick and simple to make some adjustments to her eyes. Obviously, what you do on one eye, you would then do on the other eye. So that's the first technique there. And you've already seen that, all right? So let's just uh, come out. We'll just close that picture down there. We don't need that one. Because now what I want to do is uh, we're going to go to this picture here, a dark room. And I know there are no eyes in this one here. But let me just uh, come back to the screen so you can just see me just for a second. I know it's scary. I know it's scary. Now, one of the things uh, as an... I guess to say the phrase educator, when it comes to kind of trying to guide people how to uh, use Photoshop and edit their pictures, I think it's, it's okay to kind of say, look, here's a technique that does this, here's a technique that does that. But I was guilty of it when I first started out thinking, well, he showed me this technique, that will only work there. This technique only works there. But as an educator, one thing that I'm really trying to help and kind of push is to kind of encourage people to think, to coin a phrase, outside of the box. So they see a technique that's been shown here to try to encourage people to go, I wonder if, or I wonder what would happen if. And that's what I wanna show you here because, th and this will make sense in a moment. Here, I wanna show you a technique that I haven't shown for a long time. It was back when I was doing loads of compositing and lighting effects and all that kind of stuff. But you'll see that a technique that you learn to do a particular effect might, if you try it, it might work in something else. So it's always worth experimenting because you can never break this, really, I hope. <laughs> so here's this little trick, trick first of all. Now, uh, way back I did a video and it was called the Never Ending Lighting Rig, okay? If you've never seen it, this what it is. I've got this picture off Google. It's uh, been licensed for reuse, so we can actually use this one just as in this demo. Uh, and what I wanna do is try and add a lighting effect. Poogle to you, as an educator, talk a little more slowly. I will try, but this is me, okay? This is me. So what I'm gonna do now then, to add a little bit of light into here is I'm gonna add a blank layer, first of all, then I'm gonna get a brush, and we'll take the opacity all the way up to 100%, and I'm gonna put the foreground color as being white. Now this is a really soft brush, you can see now if I go to here, Hardness at zero, so a really soft light, because we want to mimic the look of a light source in the room, because it's a bit dark in certain areas. So what I'm gonna do then, first of all then, is just press down with that there. Obviously that doesn't look real at the moment. Um, <laughs> the chat room is really interesting. Obviously that doesn't look really real at the moment if we move it around, however, like I said before, layer mask brushes and blend modes, it's incredible what you can find out just by clicking and saying, what would happen if? So now then, we've got this white kind of dot here. What would happen if I change the blend mode? And I'll go for something like, let's say, overlay. Now, why overlay? Well, I tried every other blend mode, and this is the one that worked. But now, look, as I move that light around, hopefully, you can you just see it? Can you see how it's kind of giving me a bit of a lighting effect, like so? Now, the great thing is with that lighting effect there, 
Oops, hold on a second. I've gone. Thank you, Brian. Brian's within the room. Good man, good man, Brian. Okay, so you heard what I was saying. We've got this room here. And what I've basically done, if I just go back just to show you, is add a blank layer. I've got my brush, a really soft brush, and I just press down so you've got this particular dot here. As I move it around, it's not really giving us a good effect. But if I change the blend mode from normal to overlay, now look at the screen. Can you see how that's giving me a lighting effect as we're going around the room? Now, if it's not bright enough, you could duplicate it. So Control or Command J. And can you see now how it's got brighter? We've got two layers. I'm just going to put these into a group so it's easier to move them around. So now you can see we've got this lighting effect. We can also go to Free Transform if you wanted to to make this lighting effect bigger and smaller. And I used to use this a lot. If, you're, if you use Camera Raw or maybe even Lightroom, you're probably thinking, well, why don't I do that with like an adjustment brush or the radial filter? Well, the difference here is you're using a blend mode, and that's going to interact with the picture that much more. Anthony, you've, Anthony, you've just got a text of Anthony saying, can you show us your screen? Hopefully, you can see my screen now. But you can see now how we can move this around. It's interacting with the picture, all that contrast. So it actually looks as if it really was a light. So why am I showing you this? Well, now what we're going to do, we're going to go to this picture here. And again, if you followed me on social media, you may have seen this picture of Lewis. Uh, that I took when I was working or on stage at uh, in London uh, about a week or so ago. Now this is one of the results of it, and you can see I've really pleased this picture. Those of you on uh, social media have commented on it and given it a like. Thank you very much. Uh, but Lewis's eyes, I had to do this a little bit differently. The one technique I've just shown you before, when we did that linear dodge to brighten all the eyes, didn't really work so well on this. So let me just show you. Um, let me just show you this. So here is Lewis before we've done all the retouching. And again, pretty much when I do my retouching, I'll work first of all on the eyes. So let me show you now what I'm gonna do, which kind of links in with the technique I've just shown you, using that dark room to make that lighting effect. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add a blank layer, and I'm gonna get my elliptical marquee tool. And what I'll do is I'll zoom in just a touch more. And all I'm gonna do is draw out an ellipse. Now with the ellipses, you can see it's perfectly round. Hopefully you can see that. If you don't hold down the shift key, it goes all over the place. But if you hold down the shift key, perfectly round, and then you can hold down the space bar and you can relocate it. So I'm gonna put it just inside of Lewis's eyes like so. So now we've got this marching ants, nice and round. Mark Herman, thank you very much. And somebody else has as well, just given those super chats. Really, really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, so now we've got this ellipse around in the eyes. I want to create kind of like a brightening at the bottom, almost like a catch light, if you like. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my ellips uh, elliptical tool again, but this time hold down the Alt key. So now what it's going to do is going to take away from the selection. So I'm going to click it and drag downwards. And you can see I'm creating another ellipse, another roundish ellipse. I'm going to put it just so it's around about there and then let go. And can you see now it's removed all of that bit at the top and just left me with this kind of Kind of like a, heart, a, a bit of a moon shape, but on its uh, on its kind of like flat like that. So now we've got that. I'm going to go edit and fill. There are keyboard shortcuts for this, but we'll just go the long way around. Edit and fill, and we'll choose white and click OK. Now we can get rid of the marching ants. So remember before with the dark room, we used that overlay blend mode to brighten the room up. Well, we can do that with this. First of all, though, let's just soften it down. So we we'll go filter blur. Gaussian blur, two, two and a half pixels looks pretty good to me. And then we'll click OK. But now look, what would happen if we change the blend mode? So we go from normal to overlay. And can you see now, again, it's probably too much, first of all, but it's on its own layer, so you can control the opacity. But look at that, before, after, before, and after. So what I'm going to do now then, obviously you'd repeat this on the other eye, but just for speed, we'll do it on the one eye. I'm just going to add a layer mask. A white layer mask, which means we can still see everything. And I'm going to get a brush, a black brush, because I don't want this to be a visible over the skin and all that kind of stuff. So let's just bring down the size a touch. And we'll just, uh, where's my brush? Go to there. And we'll just paint it off the bottom of his eyelid just here. So there we go, like that. So there's before, after, before, after. Let's just lower the strength of that down just like we did with that um, lighting effect in that room. So I'll bring it down to around about there. And then like we did with the very first picture, let's sharpen it all up a little bit. So we add a blank layer. We come to the sharpening tool, open the toolbar, 
making sure that we have the little icon that means it's going to look through the layer stack to find pixels that it can sharpen because at the moment it's a blank layer there's nothing in there and then we'll just come in and we'll go one two three four five six seven a bit more than i normally would do but just for illustration but you can see now we're adding in a little bit of a lighting effect in the bottom of the eyes there sometimes i like to do that uh, you can see the difference between the two eyes there because when this uh, picture was taken i had a light quite high up and it was coming down so the very top of the eye wouldn't really have been lit and it really wasn't lit because it's kind of be shielded by the eyelid and all this and the eyelash and what have you so only the bottom part is what i want to be brightened up and have a nice shape in that curve and that is sometimes a technique i'll call on to do that but again very simple very quick and only born out of thinking well i've got a technique here where i used to do this effect a lighting effect here using this overlay blend mode what would happen if I did it on eyes. So I'm trying to encourage you, if you're not doing this already, look at techniques that you use in certain pictures and think, well, what would happen if I tried it on that? Nothing can go wrong, you're not gonna break it, but just get into the habit of experimenting, okay? So that's that, right. I will get back and look at the chat room and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Caroline Tudor, I noticed the squinch too. I think you're, I think that was down to there being such bright lighting where we were doing it. Uh, but right, let's have a quick break for my voice. I'll grab a quick slurp of water whilst I just quickly play you this little uh, advert. Alrighty, so, so that's two techniques that I use and I have in my Photoshop toolbox for working on eyes. Now I want to show you a technique on a picture. Let's just dive back to my screen. Let's go back into the Photoshop screen just here. Now I want to show you this picture here. Uh, I think my mate Brian was with me when we did this one. I can't remember where we were when we did this, but Brian was definitely there. Um, I want to show you a picture now, uh, a technique that can help you to bring out detail in the eyes because sometimes whether it's down to your lighting or the color of someone's eyes, it's incredibly hard to kind of get any detail out. So let me just show you what I mean by that one here. So if I just zoom in, you can see on this gentleman's eyes here, you can't see the difference really between the pupil and the eye around, the color of the eye as well. So it all seems to kind of blend in. So it's kind of almost like shark eyes. There's hardly any detail in there whatsoever. Petersfield, that's where it was, with Vernon. Okay, so here's a technique I haven't shown for a while, but it is there in my toolbox for the times that I need it to bring it out to help me with retouching a picture. And I kind of call this, what name have I given? I've called this one the zoom noisy effect. And it will make, it will make sense. So here's what we're going to do. Again, I'm going to add a blank layer because I don't want to work directly on the picture for one thing, but also because I want to be able to move... Uh, what I do around onto the other, other eye once I'd actually done it on one so I can then copy it over So I'm gonna add a blank layer then just like before I'm gonna get my marquee tool and I'm gonna drag out a, an ellipse and we'll place it over the eye But I'm not gonna go right to the edges I'm gonna bring it just in a little bit So then we still get that kind of darkening going around the eye around the eye and that's gonna really help to make the eyes pop So that's that bit there. So the next thing I'm gonna to do is this Go to the edit menu and I'm gonna choose fill. And from the drop down contents, I'm gonna choose 50% gray. We need to put something in there, first of all, some pixels, and that's our 50% gray. Now you'll notice I've left the marching ant selection there as well. That's really important for the step that we're gonna do in a moment. But now what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna to go to the filter menu, noise, and add noise, all right? Now the amount of noise, this is a high resolution picture, the amount of noise you want to bring up, I don't know if you're, those of you watching, if you're old enough to remember, we had this in the UK where if it, you're watching television and it got to really late at night, which for me nowadays is about 10, but you know what I mean, about midnight, something like that, the TV would finish and it would just go, and you have all this kind of like noise on the screen. That's the kind of amount of noise that you want to put into this circle. So you can kind of see that just there. Once I've got that, I'll just click OK. I'll make sure that it is gaussian monochromatic we don't want any kind of coloring in this noise just black and white noise that's all you want so we'll click ok now i'm still keeping those marching ant selection there because of the next thing we're going to do we're going to go to filter do you want me to just i'll zoom in a bit more on this eye to make this a bit clearer we're going to go filter blur 
and then radial blur. Let's just bring that over. Now this is probably one of the most archaic looking previews you're ever going to find anywhere in uh, in Photoshop. But what you want to do now is it probably by default when you first choose this blur, it'll be set to spin. And this is what we used to use for making it look as if tires or wheels rather were, were moving on a car. We don't want to use that one. We want to do a zoom effect. So now look, if I move the amount slider, can you see, hopefully you can see that it's kind of looking as if those lines are going inwards. Any of you that are really into things like Star Trek or Star Wars, when the spaceships go through light speed and you see all the stars going, going past like that, that's the kind of, kind of effect you want. All right, so I'm gonna probably bring this up to around about kind of 50-ish, something like that. Now when I click OK, look what happens to this noise. So we'll click OK. Now we've got this kind of a weird kind of effect, all right, weird kind of effect. Now that we've done this, we can get rid of the marching ant selection. So we'll go Control or Command and D. That's now got rid of it. All right, now we only want to kind of mimic the look. If you look at an eye, you've got all that detail in the eye. We wanna try and recreate that to bring a bit of life back to these eyes, which were otherwise very dark and nothing in there. So what we're gonna do is this then. We are going to use a blend mode. And again, it's just having that mentality of what would happen if. So we're gonna come over to the blend modes and I'm gonna choose one here. Pure, and I know it's this one because I tried every other one. We're gonna go for hard light. Now you can see now that gets rid of a lot of the kind of gray and what have you in the picture. And it's leaving us kind of like a grainy look that has still got that zooming kind of effect. And in a way it's kind of looking, if you look really close at someone's eye, the kind of detail they get in the eye. But we need to tidy it up just a little bit. Now bearing in mind, I would do this on the other eye as well, but just for speed, I'm showing it on the one eye. So we wanna get rid of this effect, which is on parts of the face and the eye that we don't want it. So we're gonna use a layer mask. So we clicked at a layer mask. The layer mask is white, which means we can still see where it is. So we're gonna get a brush, use a black color, because black conceals it. And I'll just paint it off the top just there. And I might actually paint around the outside of this kind of effect here to soften it down just a touch as well. So it's not quite so hard, something like that. And then I need to paint it off the middle of the pupil. Now, if you don't know where that is, because it's on its own layer, just lower the opacity down just a little bit so you can start to see where it should be and paint it off around about there. So now we've got, let's just take a little bit more off there, let's say. So now if I lower the opacity on this effect, because obviously at 100% it's a bit too strong, we can go to something like that. Now I'll probably keep this a bit more, uh, more opacity so that it's clearer on your screens, but just by going before and after, can you see how now we're starting to bring a bit of interest back in the eye rather than just being nothing rather than looking like a shark side there's a little bit of interest in there now now we can also take it we have to say it to another level by kind of adding another adjustment now to really make the eyes start to have a bit more life in there and then what i'm going to choose is hue and saturation so we want to uh, maybe add a little bit of color in there or brighten the eyes as well because it wouldn't necessarily work with those other techniques so now that we've got our hue and saturation, let's give it some color. So I'm gonna click on colorize. But you'll notice if I zoom out, just by clicking colorize, all of the picture has had that colorizing effect given to it. So I only want to limit it to what I've just done with the eye. And that is the layer directly beneath the hue and saturation adjustment. So then I use this little icon uh, called a clipping mask, which is at the bottom of the properties. And it kind of looks like a square with an arrow going down, just coming out from the side of it. And when I click on that, it limits the hue and saturation adjustment to only affect the layer directly beneath it. So now look, look at the eye, we can change the color and start to give it that kind of real, kind of, I mean, I wouldn't want to add color into this necessarily, but what I can do is kind of just give it a little bit more punch, something like that, but I can also use lightness to bring a little bit of life back into the eyes as well. So let's go for something like that, zoom out. So yeah, look at that, I mean, look at that. Hopefully you can see the difference. If I just come to here, now look, let's just put these, hold down the Option key, or the Alt key rather, click on the eye icon of the, back, or just underneath the eye icon of the background layer to turn everything else off. Look at the difference very quickly. Before, after, before, after. So we've faked the look of what an eye's detail would be to take it from literally having nothing and looking completely lifeless 
to having something, all right? Now, bear in mind that this actual uh, effect is on a portrait where the, the eyes aren't too close to the screen, so it's not gonna be that much of a giveaway. And at the end of the day, if you're doing this effect and you don't tell anybody you've done it, I very much doubt anybody's gonna really guess that you've done it. So it's a real simple effect. Let's just put those two layers back on again there. You can see if we just go before, after, let's bring it over here just a touch more. So we go before, after, before, and after. All right, so that's that one there. That might be something that you might have to use on a picture where your model or subject's eyes are very, very dark. So can you see what I mean so far? I've got one more I'm gonna cover with you, but can you see what I mean so far about having a number of techniques that you can call upon because not one technique is gonna work on every picture? You might have to think, well, how can I do this? If you've got a number of techniques you can call on, you can then try this one, try that one, try that one. And if you've got a number of them, you will eventually find one that works and you go, yes, now we're rocking. Now we can move on and do something else. So that's that technique there. So let's just close that picture down. And I wanna show you now something which uh, I did this week on a picture. And it was quite, quite surprising. It really was quite surprising. Let's just get rid of this because this is gonna help uh, the computer not to have to uh, have too many things open, it'll help with the performance. So, okay, this is the uh, probably the last technique I wanna show you. So, quick slurp. Right, so this is a, a picture of my friend. Uh, he's asked me actually not to say his name, but he's, he's turned out to be a real <laughs> super, super nice guy. And I've met him, I think, two or three years on the trot, just once a year in January, when I'm presenting at this, the Society's event in London. And he comes up, we have, always have a little bit of a chat, and then off he goes. But this year, which would have been uh, last week when we had the event, I got him on stage in between presentations to get a picture of him because I just think he's got such a face full of character. Uh, and I posted this online, I think, was it last night or this morning, something like that. And the response has been brilliant. So again, if, you, if you've commented or liked it, thank you very, very much. But I, I do agree, absolutely just superb face. But this is the final picture. Let me show you the first part before the retouching is done and obviously what we're doing is we're thinking of the eyes and i want to zoom in on the eyes now i'm hoping that this is going to come through clearly on your on your screen can you see how the eyes they look very very flat now you can see the pupil you can see the color but it's almost like there's like a milkiness going across the actual eye itself the contrast in the eye is incredibly low so now then, I'm gonna finish off to show you what would happen if I used those other techniques on this. And you'll see the benefit now, really, of having other techniques to call upon. So, the first technique I did was that linear dodge. So let's give that a go, right? I'll just do it on the one eye, just so you can see what I mean. So what we did with that one then, I got myself a brush, uh, and I pressed Q to go into Quick Mask. And I'll just bring it over here just a bit and zoom in for you so you can see it just there. And then what I did was I painted on the eye to get the red overlay. And I'll just be very, very quick with this. So now when we come out of Quick Mask, we have that selection. That's the part of the eye we're going to be working on. I then went to this selective color adjustment layer, making sure that where it says colors, it went to no uh, neutrals. And then I changed the blend mode, didn't I? I went from normal to linear dodge. But can you see how that just doesn't work? Even though it's brightened them, it's exaggerated how flat the actual contrast and everything in the eye is. And I kind of thought, no, nope, that just doesn't work. Don't like that at all. So I scrapped it, okay? So that's that one. So then, what else did I do? Well, then I tried the other technique, which was the one that we did on Lewis to brighten the bottom part of the eye. So again, as a quick reminder for that one, we added a blank layer, we got our marquee tool, and I dragged out an ellipse and place it just into the eye like so. I then held down the Alt key and dragged out another ellipse, and you can see we can build that one just there. And again, you can, we can move that second one around now just by holding the space bar, and we'll place it, say, around about there, and then let go, and you can see how it deletes everything above it and just leaves us with that kind of like, it's like a moon shape, but on its side. Then what I did was I filled that with white. So we got edit, fill. There are keyboard shortcuts, but like I said before, we'll go the long way around just to keep it simple. And we'll fill that with white and then click OK. And let's just get rid of the marching ants. And then we blurred it, didn't we? We blurred it just a little bit. So we go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we'll just bring that blur up just a little bit more, let's say. Let's go for something around about there for argument's sake. Click OK. 
And then, do you remember that technique with the room where we did the lighting effect? We used the overlay blend mode, didn't we, to brighten up and give us that kind of effect, which we then did with Lewis. So let's do it with this one here. We'll go from normal to choose overlay. But that just looks awful. It just looks absolutely terrible. Doesn't work. It worked fantastic on the picture of Lewis, but on this one, it just doesn't work. So what did I do with this? Well, I think when it comes, let's just come away from the screen just for a second, and I'll just come back to here. I have a quick slurp. I think when it comes to doing retouching, and I'm saying this by experience because I know that I did this, I think we can make things harder than they really are. Okay, we kind of look at a picture and we go, right, I've got a technique for that. And we have all these steps to create this effect. And yes, we produce some great results. But you know, sometimes we don't have to do anything earth shatteringly amazing to get the result we want. Sometimes we only have to do the most basic of, of, of adjustments to really make an image pop. All right. So with this particular picture here, which is what I did with the final image that I've posted online and shared and people have liked, was this. All I did was this. And I was kind of, when I did it, I was like, really? Is that all I needed to do? I added a blank layer, as always, always add a blank layer. Uh, and then again, I came over to the toolbar. Oops, I better go back to my screen, hadn't I? Let's go back to my screen. Got a habit of doing that. All righty. Okay, so. The eyes are really, really flat, low contrast. So what I did was this. You can see in the layers panel, I've added a new blank layer. Then what I did was I just came over to the toolbar and chose the sharpen tool. I, if you don't use this, I highly recommend try using the sharpen tool. It was improved you know, quite a few years ago now in Photoshop. It is absolutely brilliant. It, it allows you to sharpen areas selectively and you can really push that sharpening without the image starting to break down. So what I'll do is then I'm going to get the sharpen tool and I'll leave it at the strength of 30 but again just make sure that you have the little icon. It looks like um, it looks like four layers of paper on top of each other. That basically means that when you're working on a blank layer if that little icon in the options is pressed down it'll look through the layer stack to find pixels that it can sharpen because at the moment we're using a blank layer and there is nothing in there to sharpen. So now then, with this set, look what happens when all I do is just use the sharpen tool. So we'll come into here, let's increase it, and I'm gonna go way beyond what I actually did do, purely so that you can see it on your screens. But I'm gonna press down and move around the eye. So we go one, keep it pressed down, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, I'll go a couple more, 11, 12. So you can see hopefully already something is happening just by sharpening. And when we think about it, sharpening really is just kind of adding contrast into those little areas to make it look sharper. It's just increasing the blacks and the whites, how they join and, and kind of enhancing that. But even that so far is having an effect, all right? So that's the first thing I did. And then again, something really simple was, can you, uh, right, all I did then was go to uh, something like a levels adjustment. I'm gonna come over to my control panel here because I'm gonna scare you just a second. Let's just go for that and that. So now you can see me. All right, so now then, levels adjustment, and I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast, but I only want the contrast to work on the eye. So do you remember before when we added that hue and saturation to colorize the eye? We need to tell Photoshop, only affect the layer directly below. So to do that, we use a clipping mask. So in the properties here, here's that little icon again that looks like a square with the arrow coming off to the side and pointing down. We click on that. So now the levels is only going to affect the layer directly below. And then what we do is we can come in and start playing with this here to kind of give the eyes just a little bit more punch. They needed much more contrast. But if we zoom out now, look at the difference. If I can show you, let's try and show you side by side. Maybe you can see the difference between the left eye and the right eye, or even just if I just turn it all off. So look at the eye there, before, after, before and after. Then you would come in and do the sharpening. If you wanted more detail, you could do that zoom noisy effect maybe, something like that. But I think this one here kind of just shows that really you don't have to do the most amazing, incredible effects using all kinds of adjustments. Sometimes it can be something as simple as one tool and just using it and seeing what happens. And you could see there, just by using that sharpening tool, even that 
took away that kind of milkiness and flatness that was in the eye to start to give us a little bit of life back. And by adding a levels adjustment, we can then start to increase that even further. All right. So I'm hoping that kind of makes sense. I don't want to kind of keep you here for too long. The tiredness has been revealing itself because I've been forgetting a couple of things. But hopefully you're kind of you're sticking with me and you're bearing with me. How many? I'd be interested to see how many dislikes there are. There was one before we even started, I noticed. Uh, but right, just give you a, a quick break. I've got some stuff to show you to finish off. But let me just press this because I spent a lot of time doing these. I'll just put this on for you first. Uh, and I've got a couple of things to let you know about. So let's just press this. Alrighty, so the first thing to let you know about is this. All right, finally, I have finally, <laughs> finally finished. Oops, not that one. Finally finished my. There uh, we go. Let's put that there. Finally finished cover shoot. I've been talking about this one for ages. I got it recorded in May. And I've been working on it since May. So finally, let's just get rid of that cheering. Shut up, guys. <laughs> Uh, finally, I've got it finished. Uh, and what I'm going to do this week, if you're a member of my uh, email group, what I'm going to do is send out a quick email, just say, look, this is what the content is. Do you think there's anything else I need to put in there? Because I'm paranoid that I'm going to miss something out that you think, oh, that should have been in there. So uh, I'll do that. If you can just let me know, that'd be great. But I intend to release that cover shoot. Uh, I think it's the 1st of February, which I believe is next uh, Friday. I think it's Friday. Uh, Russell Clock, focus on the likes. Russell, I am, mate. This face is smiling. <laughs> I am. Does not believe me? It doesn't bother me at all. I think it's quite funny. Uh, so that's that. And the other thing to tell you about, I don't know if you've been to my website uh, today, but let me just go to my desktop. And let's just bring up uh, this here. There we go. So you've got that. And I will get rid of me. You don't want to see me while I'm talking about this. Let's go to that. Right, so what I did was uh, I did a post today called This is a Must If You Have a Computer. And it's a little tour or a little kind of walkthrough I've done showing about a new piece of kit that I've got. All right, a new piece of kit. And it's called a UPS. Now, I feel like I'm pretty late to the party when it comes to these uh, UPSs. Uh, in fact, let me just... I recorded this on my phone earlier. You saw a little bit of it earlier. But this is what my UPS is. So you can see it just on the floor, just under the desk there. My God, those wires need tidying up. But you can see that's what it is. It's built like a tank and it's heavy as a tank. But basically what that does, and it, I explain that in the uh, in the blog post, is it's called an uninterruptible or uninterrupted power supply. So uh, imagine if you had a power cut or a lightning storm, whatever, and your computer just went off. That is just a nightmare. You're going to lose stuff. You can damage your hard drives and all that kind of stuff. What the in, what this UPS for short, what that does is the minute there's like a, a power cut, automatically a battery that's in, inside it kicks in so you can continue to work. Now, it's not designed so that you can just continue to work for hours and hours. It'll give you a few minutes, which is enough time for you to shut, save what you're doing, shut it down nice and safely. But the great thing about this particular unit that I got, and again, the details are over on the, the blog, is it also has software installed, which I've got now, so that even if I'm not here, because I leave this thing running all the time, if anything happens and the power goes out, it will automatically, safely shut itself down. And the only reason I've got this was because a short while ago, I was having uh, some updates done on the computer and you know that bit when the screen goes kind of blue and you have some oh no black actually and you have some writing across it saying updates installing do not turn off your computer well i didn't but nature did because i had a power cut and it completely wrecked it so everything had to be fixed i was on the phone to the computer company reinstalling the lot that wouldn't have happened if i'd had a ups so if i can finish this off with any advice get a ups and that one only cost me 120 pounds which is a lot less than replacing all my pictures, my hard drives, so on, so on, and so on. Um, so there you go. That's it, pretty much, really. Uh, nothing else I really want to tell you about. Thanks so much for sticking around. I don't know what numbers were like. If you could let me know at some point, that would be interesting. Uh, I know there are other uh, webinars going on tonight. The Grid's on, which is why I don't want to take up too much of your time, because I think some of you folks are going to be watching The Grid, because you know that's, uh, that's something that you tune into. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you could let people know about the channel, I'd love it if you could do that. Uh, numbers are going well, but I want to try and keep this growing. Uh, the podcast is coming soon as well. If you didn't know about the podcast, that's coming very, very soon. That's it. 
Thanks for spending time with me. It's time you won't get back, and I'll see you next time. I'll play this. Bye-bye.